All right, we are back. Our monthly live stream with Arundel Sound. We've got President Jan. How do you say your last name? Lassenen. Almost. <laughs> Lassenen. Lassenen. Okay, and we're here with Lucas. How you doing, Lucas? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Well, I always love having you on the channel talking about your awesome Norwegian products. Today, we're going to be talking. We're going to be focusing on the Arundel customer service, customer support, your trial period, your return policy, all that kind of stuff. Because I think it's important to, for people to understand that when they buy one of your products, what kind of service they could expect from your brand. And, you know, if you look at the online comments, whether it's on our channel or it's on other channels or even on user feedback on the Internet, you guys have a very high rating. There's a lot of satisfied customers there. People talk about your support is just top notch. We love seeing that because we love recommending pro uh, companies who stand behind their products. You have some of the longest warranties in the business, and maybe we should talk a little bit about why that is and how confident in you are in your product warranty and also your return policies. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we're definitely proud of that. <laughs> so yeah, that's something we strive for every day. You know, make the customers happy. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very important part of maybe the most important part of uh, the whole company. Yeah. Awesome. Well, before we get into it, I want to announce the winner for the 1961 Tower. What's awesome about you guys is every time you do a live stream, at least for now, I don't know if you're going to do it in the next live stream, you keep giving away um, products and it's a global contest, which is awesome. As you guys can see here, uh, this is the thumbnail for the live stream. And I mean, this is the product that we we're giving away, the 1961 Tower. And now we have the winner here, and it's Tim Dukeman in Ohio. So congratulations to Tim. Go claim Congrats. your prize. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll announce it again at the end of the live stream in case anybody missed it. But congrats, guys. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Let's talk about your customer support. Yeah, so... Um... What if we start from the beginning, you know, when it's not always about the product itself, it's for us, it's about the customer journey. There's a lot of good products out there, no doubt about it. There's a lot of good people out there that make good products, but a lot of them are lacking when it comes to the co whole communication, the whole process, the whole buying experience. And I think this is something that separates us from, from the competition. That's something we do really, really good. And that's something we strive for to be better every day and you know, strive for excellence. That's one of our core values. And yeah, this is a very important thing to us. And it starts with the website. It starts with the communication with the CS team. You always reach someone from the brand. It's not like a call center or uh, you know, some, some people that were just put into that position. You always get enthusiasts that are passionate about the product, that know about the product. That this is something that is very, very different to a lot of companies. I worked in the hi-fi home cinema business my whole life. I worked at the retail stores and uh, I worked with distributors back and forth. And I know how it is. Most of the distributors really don't care that much about the product. It's more, yeah, just selling stuff. A, a lot of companies, not all, of course, but a lot of them. And a lot of dealers are maybe the same way. And it's, yeah, a, a lot of really bad apples, you know. So um, for us, it's very, very important that if you contact us, you reach someone that is knowledgeable, that's passionate about the product, that knows the product, and that you get from the start, you get the right feeling that you found the right company you know the the whole experience should start with the first contact should it should be the website of course you know because we are selling direct worldwide it's the website of course that is always updated you know we always try to improve things but then stuff like our first reply times that's something that i think is like market leading in our industry i'm pretty sure we are one of the fastest when it comes to first response times our median is around 15 minutes. So if you write us within business hours, you get a reply mostly within 15 minutes. You know, that is like uh, unheard of. 
when I first started, I thought this is impossible, <laughs> but it's not. And uh, we basically have this almost every week, you know, the median between us. So um, this is something that is very, very remarkable and um, yeah, unheard of in our industry, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, you can... Yeah, sorry. Uh, one thing that kind of impresses me, I'm going to try to share it here. Um, the fact that you have so much detail on your website about your products. Yeah, absolutely. Can you see my screenshot right now? Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm just looking at your 1961 bookshelf, and that's one of your least expensive products. It's a small bookshelf speaker, right? Yep. The least and you look at the, not only do you have awesome photos, so you you know exactly what you're getting. You show every little detail, what's in the, what's in the box, the connectors, you have review links. You talk about the magnetic grills, the, the dynamic base, enclosure tuning, the tech specs, but then you actually show legitimate measurements, like on and off axis measurements here. I mean, you don't, you typically don't get this kind of detail in a product. And I remember when I used to interview Dr. Floyd Tool from Harman, he said, you get more useful information off the sidewall of a car tire than you do on most loudspeaker manufacturers' websites. <laughs> Yeah, and here we are, and you've got you know on and off access data. You've got the impedance, so you know whether or not the speaker could could be driven properly by an AV receiver. Because a lot of AV receivers are wimpy when they try to drive four ohm loads, right? They go into current protection, so yeah. you could prepare for that, knowing what the speaker is doing. You guys are actually honest about the impedance, unlike a lot of manufacturers when they tell you it's an eight ohm tower when it eight ohm compatible. And then you go measure it and it dips down well below four ohms. It's obviously not an eight ohm speaker, but they're doing that for marketing purposes. So that in itself speaks volumes for um, how you guys believe in your product. Specmanship counts for a lot, especially for our readers, because we're more technical based consumers than the average run of the mill. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jim, um, just to throw in something, uh, because you point out kind of the, the core value of the product tech specs what we show and what we're honest about on everything that we show on the product page but that is kind of a internally from the customer support uh, viewpoint um, and the co company values we see the product more or less a tool um, because when customers come to us they have a need uh, so what we need to try to find out what their needs are and uh, so for us, it's important to for the outcome of the what the products bring for the customer, mm -hmm. not what hardware we can just push on a customer because that that can just lead to a short time satisfaction or whatever. And there's a lot of returns. We have actually just returns. Um, we have uh, coming in from the consumer direct. It's we have a low five percent in returns, which is kind of amazing in terms of. How we do it one thing is good products but as i mentioned we try to meet the customer where they where they are to understand their needs and then find the products to solve their kind of problem or their need as a as a uh, an outcome and it is kind of um, that is kind of what's making our journey to help the customer to get this experience this end-to-end -end, starting from the customer support and when they get the products if they have any even issues, we help them. We assist them almost twenty four seven. So they, it's kind of a for us. It's not shifting boxes. It's more about the customer and the experience itself. What they are achieving. That's kind of our target. That's what so that's we a, review. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point. So if someone calls you and they say, "Hey, I've got." a spare room that's only 10 foot by 12 foot. It's a small space. Mm -hmm. And they say, I want to stick 1723 towers and, and, wow. the, and the 1723 2V subwoofers all around the mm -hmm. room. Are you, are you going to tell them, yes, do that? Or are you actually going to no, tell no. them that's the inappropriate <laughs> no. amount of speaker for a size? No, that's not, the right, that's not the right way. Even if you said, I have plenty of money, I, I don't care about the price. We, we listen. We understand, but we mm -hmm. still are recommending the right system for you or that particular customer. Because that's that's the whole point of us helping the customer. Because if right. not, we could just shut down the customer support, have a ro robot, 
or of whatever widget on, on the website that could help you. Uh, like a drop down which speakers you have and then the subwoofer came in and then on you go. It's it's more complex, uh, it's more emotions into it than just like hard facts, geek facts, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, it is what we get. And then, you know, um, even the biggest speakers will not be the best one for a small room. So that's important. We yeah. never do that. Yeah. 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 So let's go over the return policy or the trial period. Um, my understanding is it's 60 days. That, so if someone buys a product from you, they've got up to 60 days to determine whether or not that speaker is right for them and right for their room. And at that point, you either you pay return shipping both ways or you offer them an alternative product and you swap it out. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So for it's not unfortunately not for every country out there. Of course, we want to have this at some point for every country and we will, mm -hmm. you know, so for the US, we do this in mainly mostly Europe that's uh, covered. So pretty much risk free. We will always like yeah, like Jan said before, we will always try to avoid returns, you know, to, you know, always give the best recommendation that is possible. I, if you reach me, for example, I say always less is more. A lot of people just want to cram the room with speakers. Sometimes less is more and then get the right angles, get the right placement, you know. Yeah. So make sure from the beginning that the customer is choosing the right components and then of course we have less returns but if you're unhappy with the sound could be not everyone listens the same not everyone has the same preferences mm -hmm. of course you can return pretty much hassle free within 60 days you can um, upgrade to something different we will pay the return costs no problem that's uh, absolutely no no issue with us yeah yeah there's some great uh, comments here I can attest that it will respond within 15 minutes or less. Best in the industry. That's awesome. I love seeing that. I love seeing real users come in and chime in on your customer support because it's that's the best testimony is people that actually been through the process and understand what you guys are all about. Um, so one question I have for you, I'm going to put you on the spot. Is there, a, whether it's now or in the future, is there a possibility where you would offer an upgrade path? beyond 60 days. So let's say someone bought a 1961 tower and six months later, they're like, they really are itching for a 1723. Is there a possibility they could trade it in, get a you know partial credit or full credit and, and go up to the next level? Is that something you guys are considering? We actually Im implemented this a uh, few weeks ago, months ago. Uh, I don't know, Jan, when, when was it? Mm -hmm. Last end of last year? Maybe time. Time is uh, go, going fast, so it's uh, three three months ago, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what's so the policy? Have... Because I wasn't aware of it. What's the policy on that? And what's the so, duration? Yeah, we have a one-year premium upgrade. So if you just bought maybe our small series, moved places and realized, okay, I need something bigger, within one year, we will take back the, the, the first purchase, basically, mm -hmm. with a deducted price a little bit so i think 15% uh, we have it right now yeah, that's covering uh, shipping, shipping and yeah, everything exactly. all in all in all mm -hmm. exactly so we take back the the whole set whatever surround system you had if you upgrade to a bigger system within a year so nice. you no hassle with you know selling on ebay whatever you know we just uh, take care of it of course keep the original boxes keep it in good shape and then uh, if everything checks out you get a refund and you can choose something new from our website and uh yeah awesome I, I think i think that this is like a really really great thing so even more risk free if you will so uh mm -hmm. some people really are unsure what to choose you know take the smaller one take the bigger one maybe live with the smaller one for a few months mm -hmm. decide to go bigger no worries so what happens with the product you get back? Do you sell it as B stock? Is there an option for like an outlet for R and L? Yes, uh, we have an outlet section on our website where we sell those speakers with a discount, depending on the, uh, of course, on the um, condition. Some mm -hmm. have some, some are basically brand new. <laughs> I have some speakers from a customer return, and they are brand new and uh, look awesome. So just a discount on. Uh, on a pretty much brand new product. Some of course have maybe shipping damage, but then we will adjust the price for the customer. That's no problem, yeah. Do you test out all the speakers that are returned to make sure they meet, you know, manufacturer yes. spec? 
Okay. Yes. So, you know, so if someone the, buys a B stock, they're they're, they're going to get the same performance. It just might be a little bit cosmetic blemish yeah. or something. And and all the uh, all the benefits that it, you have when you buy new. So doesn't matter. So the same warranty, same return policy, no difference whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of good comments here. A lot of good comments. Appreciate it. Thank you. Someone had a question about your grill covers and I can't find it now. <laughs> they were asking what the purpose of a grill cover is. Is it just to protect the drivers or does it, or is there other reasons you would recommend using the grill covers or would you, would you say don't use the grill covers if you don't have little kids or worrying about damaging a driver? What are your thoughts on that? So what, Jan, what do you think? <laughs> uh, first of all, protection. You have kids. You have kids so yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, they, they should. They they have learned their lesson. No, um, it's. Um, I would say first for the aesthetics uh, and and also protection. Um, Somehow, having taken them off and on, someone wants to see the driver excursion and uh, show off. I don't know. It's just a matter of taste, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you can protect them from sunlight you know if the speakers maybe is uh, standing close to a window you know a little bit uv protection from from the drivers you know so the surround gets not uh, will not get brittle that quick you know from the sun that's maybe it it's just protection but it really has no impact on uh, sound quality not not really yeah mm -hmm. awesome and now what's your uh warranty po uh, policy on the 1961 series i thought you increased the warranty so it's yeah. is it on level with the 1723s now exactly yeah. we we had a discussion about this and realized that why should the small series be somewhat uh, you know reduced in warranty it's the same high quality product mm -hmm. as the bigger ones so we decided to step up the five years to 10 years for the smaller series, the same as the big ones that already have 10 years of warranty and five years on Safufa amplifiers. And this is, I think, I don't know if there's another other company that does this. I think free is like the, the most I've seen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Especially subwoofer plate amps. Usually you only get a year. Yeah. And those are the most, I've found those are the least reliable components in audio is the yep. subwoofer plate amp. Oh yeah, I I switched out. I think hundreds of subwoofer plate amps from every manufacturer out yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had that know. happen. Yep, not fun. <laughs> no, not not real fun, and it, sometimes really expensive. If you're outside the uh, warranty period, some uh, companies charge a lot of money for it, and it's only refurbished amps. Yeah. So let me ask you this now: in the unlikely event someone has your product, whether it's a subwoofer plate amp or it's a tower speaker and they get a defective driver uh do you send replacements and instructions on how to change it especially with the amplifier or do you actually take the product back and and take it back to your factory and repair it and send it back to the customer how does that work yeah so for a company that sells direct we design the products with serviceability in mind so it should be easily serviceable at home for the customer mm -hmm. a plate amp is switched out in like two to five minutes. Oh, okay. You know, we we have like a really, really cool, when I first, when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is like a great idea. Uh, we have like a service kit with new screws, with a, um, what you call it, like an extractor, so you can get the play damp out. Most of the time it's glued in, it's like a gasket around, so mm -hmm. uh, the, the play damp sticks in. So uh, there's like a, like a, yeah, what you call it, like a screw, like a screw you can screw in and uh, get the play damp out without any issues and there's instructions we have videos uh, we sent the customers uh, we will do even more videos in the future uh, all of the parts are pretty easily serviceable at home but of course there there are uh, customers that don't want to you know that maybe don't have or don't feel well doing it no problem yeah. we will take care of shipping back and forth no worries uh, and we'll we will fix the speaker of course it's an important question because I've had subwoofers from other brands where when I tried to change the plate amp, I had to take the woofer out to get to the amplifier. And oh. that's a pain. You got to pull all the surrounding material out. And, yeah. and then, you know, the connectors, are, sometimes they don't use uh, an actual connector. They use a threaded insert or something. So 
the fact that you make your product serviceable and and you give instructions like that is speaks volumes again for after customer support you know after you buy the product and if you have any issues mm. exactly that that is the whole concept you know you, you want to even after you know maybe after the warranty period even then you know we want to be able to service the product we want to give basically lifetime support we mm. are the company we, we stand behind it of course there will be some day where some parts are not available anymore or whatever that can happen but still um I think that this is a really, really great design and pretty easy to do for the customer, especially the plate amp. That's that's a no-brainer, I would say. Very, awesome. very easy to do. Yeah. The uh, the big difference also from if we if we take in the product back, it will take shipping back and forth, administration handling. It probably goes maybe a couple of weeks or maybe two, three weeks. But if you if you go to your local the store that you bought it and they have to today they don't have any local repair shops so they have to send it out in a centralized you know big uh, service shop it can go weeks or if not months um, if you mm. had a tough party on Saturday and you call in let's say you emailed us on Wednesday um, Sunday and then we shipped out the parts let's say it was a tweeter the woofer amplifier on Monday you may have your sub for our speaker up and running matter of three or four days after. And then we have pre-labeled the return. You pack it down in the bad parts in the, in the, in the, in the, in the package and then back. If you had bro we don't kind of um, uh, encourage people to break their speakers, but uh, we kind of uh, trust them. We don't, question much if you come into us and say hey uh it blew it blew up even if you say i play loud and then we say that's okay that's what it how it is designed to take all the you know the, the hard tackling high volumes we just ship we don't have any uh, going big rounds with discussions about how you manage to break it and mm -hmm. we may need to charge you or whatever but it's just a uh, bad way of doing customer support and how you servicing because it's just they say one one happy customer can create 10 new potential customers and it's the other way around also the yes. bad effect is even worse yeah so but in, we're not concerned about what the customer believes at the end but it's just kind of the core values that we want this is just a one part of the uh, customer experience When they have something that breaks down, then we show the same mentality as when they bought the products. So that's kind of key for us to show that we are there, even if they have issues or problems. Um, shipping issues that may occur, obviously. Uh, we can't, it's, that's one of the things that is super important doing e-commerce or consumer direct. But it's out of our, we don't have RNL logistics, so we need to use your DHL, UPS, but if that happens, we just ship them a new product right away and we take the other one back without even waiting uh, for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jan, I'm going to put you on the spot because this question always comes up in these live streams and I'm going to let you kind of give your spiel about it. Some people are asking any plans for three-way designs. I think they're focusing mostly on center channels. So obviously an MTM, There's limitations to its off axis response. But as I said in many articles, you got to get about 20 degrees off axis before the lobing becomes a problem. And then by the time you're 20 degrees off axis, you're usually close to a sidewall. You don't have good video, you don't have good stereo imaging. But still, that being the case, people sometimes do prefer a wider dispersion speaker with less lobing horizontally. Um, so in those cases, you don't have a three way center to address it. Is that something that may come in the future or do you recommend maybe going with a bookshelf speaker below the TV in those cases? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, our, I wouldn't say because most customers doesn't even, I'm not sure how many or how few customers have been complaining about it. So that this is kind of some, because I don't foresee that this is a problem with our products. It's just, 
you know, Thomas touched based on his last um, video streaming you guys did, and he mm -hmm. covered that uh, pretty pretty well. Uh, sure, I mean, I can't say no. Um, there's not like anything in the drawing right now, but I can. It's uh, it's more like a yes than a, than a no. So it's um, we focus on the products we have now, and um, but we also are always improving products. Um, so um, it would be a lie if I say no. So uh, they will come. We have no, um, no. Uh, we don't know where, when it comes. So, well, you do. You do have three-way products. Your towers have base modules, and then the MPM. Yeah. Is, yeah so you do. Your towers Definitely. are three-way. I just want people to realize that. It's two and a half. Yeah, two and, two and a half. half. Two yes. and a half. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So for us, but for the center channel, so it's uh, we don't have the three-way today. But as you mentioned. As mentioned, uh, Thomas too. I think that's more like um, maybe a concern that's more related to other dis speaker designs than ours, but still mm -hmm. it's not 100% optimal. Uh, but again, we focus on our customers' um, experience. And I'm not sure, Lucas, so you have more in... Um, overview of this than me, but I'm not sure if we have received any returns based from that pure fact only. No, not 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 really. It's like like Gene said. It's basically the same thing I always tell the customer. If you're sitting so far off axis, you have other problems that are more severe. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's always the the problem. Um, people don't realize this. Yeah, of course, a freeway center will have better off axis response, but then you're sitting maybe with the ear close to the surround speaker. And that's more annoying than maybe oh, yeah. some off-axis uh, lobing sure. effects, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I personally was this, the same same guy, you know? When I when I started at Arndale, I thought, oh, no freeway center. It will not sound right. And then I <laughs> tried it for myself and it was like, huh, you really can't hear anything. <laughs> it yeah. just works. It's, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a good center. Yeah, of course, it's the monitor is just the center on the side, you know, like mm -hmm. a horizontal mm -hmm. laid down but it, it works for most situations it just works and uh, and then you have three identical speakers in the front very very smooth panning effects there's a lot of advantages disadvantages in both sides and i can understand both sides that's uh, yeah yeah of course yeah um oh this is cool i want to show this comment i love the handwritten letter from the ceo framed in and have it in the theater room <laughs> very cool Thank you. <laughs> uh, so there's a, I'm going to address the negative comments too. So this person's claiming I have reported the issue about free shipping to them twice and simply don't care and continue to advertise it when it's not true. I would assume that means certain countries don't get free shipping, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Uh, we have this mentioned on our website and our terms and conditions. It's not free for everyone, unfortunately. Yeah. We, yeah. This, this will take a time. We, we working hard on this. Or oh, Jan is working hard on this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we will expand free shipping to more and more countries month by month. This is uh, like one of our yearly goals to be more present and offer free shipping to more countries. You know, that's mm -hmm. this. Yeah, it's it's not like false advertising. It's in our terms and conditions. It's yeah for the US. Absolutely, as long as you disclose it. Yeah, there's no yeah. problem there. Um, I'm I'm curious. What's your biggest? Um, What's your biggest country now where you sell your products? Who's your biggest uh, market? The, U the U.S. That's awesome. Definitely. And that's pretty, I mean, that's yeah. within a couple of years, right? I mean, you've only been yeah. selling in the U.S. for a couple of years. Yes. It seems like just um, our company mentality, those, the products, how we do things, uh, the, maybe the, cat, the type of products mm -hmm. is really seems to be a really nice um, fit for the American customers. We are so excited for this growth journey. We have been just, um, it's about in August, we started up in August 21. And um, so 22 was a blast for us in, in the US market. And uh, we appreciate so many great customers coming from there. I mean, appreciative, easygoing, uh, few issues and so it's yeah that one thing is the growth but it's the journey cost too you know how, how is that growth 
feeling, you know, it's, uh, and that's been uh, super well. Even, you know, we had uh, some outage of stock in the beginning of 22 due to um, just the growth of the market that we didn't anticipate. It was just flying off the shelves right away. And, uh, but we had uh, customers waiting for weeks and months actually. Uh, and being super patient, uh, patient on just meeting uh, the understanding and everything. So the American comp, uh, the American market is truly um, something that we will focus hard on, and uh, we uh, really appreciate it. Well, Americans love things that are overbuilt, and that's exactly what mm -hmm. your products are. You look at the build quality of any of your products, and mm -hmm. they're typical of products double the price. I mean, that's really what it's all about. You get guys like James Larson, who's a very pragmatic reviewer. And you look at how he gushes over the build quality of your products. Not only do they measure well and they sound good, but the workmanship, I think <clears> that's what sells a lot of people over because they don't want stuff that's just like a cardboard box with drivers in it, right? They want something that's substantial. Um, uh, Americans like muscle cars kind of thing, right? So when they look at your speaker, it's kind of like a refined muscle car. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we're, uh, you know, we're a young company. We can't, you know, and we will never have because we have the core fundamentals in the company that we don't want to skimp on quality for product uh, for profits. But you, you've seen many companies out there that, you know, without ma naming, men uh, naming names, but it's, they have been here so for decades and they can literally launch anything in charge whatever they want, and they will sell a heck load of products yeah. based on their naming and the branding and, you know, decades in the market. So we use that to our advantage, you know, being the small, you know, David against the big Goliath. Um, and uh, we have to start somewhere and the product has to be super solid. It doesn't, you can't, you can't sell poor products um, and then have a crazy good customer support. You have to you have to have both. It's a synergy, you know. Um, it's a circle of um, everything that you need to. Everything needs to be excellent. Yeah. And actually, one of the three core values of the company is excellence. That we do excellent things on the super few things. We don't do many things in a company. We are focusing super hard on a few things. And I think that may be the difference. Right. This is a good question. Um, will there ever be a place in the U.S. to listen to your speakers before purchasing, kind of like a kiosk or something? Or one of those, there's, you know, you see like Focal, for example, has these little listening centers. They have these little shops around the uh, mm -hmm. country. Is that something you guys are considering? Or do you want to just stand behind trying product out in your own listening space with that incredible return policy? As it stands right now and the next few years, we will stand behind our mentality of how we do it now. Mm -hmm. um, we want to, it's not that this is a bad idea. It's just that we need to do what we're doing uh, to the level where we are seeing stagnation in terms of the offerings to the customers, maybe. So maybe if we find a concept that will work in, let's say, a market, easygoing market as the US market that mm -hmm. we could use something like this but i don't foresee that's going to happen in a few uh, next years no gotcha one last question on your um b stock do you update that regularly so people know what's in the b stock store yep yes yep. it's, it's <clears throat> oh sorry <clears throat> it's done automatically so if the warehouse receives the goods and it's all checked and uh, all good it's automatically updated to the website so it makes sense to check it regularly. It's not like a, it's always on Fridays where we update mm -hmm. the website. It's uh, a few times a day, maybe, you know, it's not really uh, sporadic. Yeah. So one suggestion mm -hmm. I have you might want to consider is maybe have a waiting list area for people that are looking for use 1723 towers. They can <laughs> sign up on your website. And then when you have a used one, you give them notification. So they get first dibs mm -hmm. of buying them. Definitely, something, definitely mm -hmm. something we thought about already. Um, yeah, sometimes you have customers asking and you know that maybe someone is returning something. Yeah. Then of course it's, it's always worth, you know, contacting us, always give us a call, write us an email, you yeah. know, sometimes, you know, I, 
there was this one customer I knew, okay, he's returning this and that subwoofer in this color. I knew it will be in a few weeks, you know, then, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just give us a call. No problem. Jan, I'm putting you on the spot again because I keep asking you guys and you keep deflecting. When are you going to have active speakers? <laughs> Come on. Spill the beans. We will have it. We will have it. We want them now. Okay. I can't give it that right now. We, <laughs> we will have it. It uh, definitely has been in the plans for a long time. Uh -huh. And um, we will have it. But uh, not before we are... 110% sure that we have technology and that we can offer something amazing for the for the market for the customers. We don't want to give something that's already in the market for the customer. It's um, we want to have truly performance, truly technology, truly functionalities, features, which will give a super impactful experience for the customer. So. Mm -hmm. um, Active speakers doing that well, will, it takes time. It takes time. But uh, it will come out. Uh, I can't say no uh, when, but um, it will come. Okay. So I have a question that I don't think we're going to have time to fully address the proper way, but it's possible for a future live stream. It's about dealing with acoustically transparent screens and how to place speakers behind them and how to get the best sound. I've been struggling with this for over a year and I finally got a good solution in my situation. I'm wondering what your guys thought is on that. How many of your customers actually put their spe your speakers behind acoustically transparent screens? And if it's something that you consider significant, we could look at doing a future live stream about it and give some recommendations. Not, we don't have a lot of customers with acoustically transparent screens. It's sometimes I feel like, uh, people want to show off the speakers you know it seems like the last few days uh, few, fla, la, mm, sorry last few months i would say a lot of people just want to place them in front i personally love acoustically transparent screens but as you said it's mm -hmm. it's always a compromise in some way <clears throat> um, there's a lot of good woven screens out there you know yeah I, I really don't like those micro perf screens. No, horrible. I, mean, I had bad experience with a screen yeah. innovation. I lost of 10 dB of high frequencies with the scrim layer and yeah. the vinyl covering. So yeah. yeah. And um, there's advantages to using acoustically transparent screens because if you build it off the wall, you could actually put acoustical acoustic material behind it <clears throat> and use yeah. it as a mid bass trap. And exactly. it really tightens your stereo image if you do it right. And um, so we're going to be doing more videos on that. I was just curious what your experiences are. And the fact that you mentioned always go with a woven screen when you can as opposed to a micro perf. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's the, the best way. But there's a lot of different materials out there. And there's a lot of new stuff coming out. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have that much experience with it. Um, I think the, there is some good stuff out there. Um, yeah, and it really depends on the market, you know. So in Europe, there you can find different materials than in the US, for example. I know there was like this one material that a lot of guys from Germany were importing from the US because it was, you know, the thing to have. Mm -hmm. You know, this this material is the best right now. Buy it from the US and import it for a lot of money, you know. But no, go with a woven screen and you should be fine. If you have the right seating distance so you don't see the, the structure of the woven screen, yeah. uh, leave a little bit of space behind the speaker. It's not that important with like with the micro perf. There you have to leave a little, a little more space between. Mm -hmm. So, But with a woven screen, you can get pretty close. The other cool thing and people need to realize is because you, you're using good drivers in your components <clears> and you have a waveguide that increases low frequency sensitivity of the tweeter. Yeah. If you have to boost the treble three or four dB, it's not like you're going to go into a thermal compression issue with your speakers. Your speakers are pretty bulletproof with that. There's exactly. a lot of speakers. People will buy a speaker of lesser design and they'll go and EQ the snot out of it to, to compensate for it and they'll blow tweeters. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So you definitely need to EQ just one or two dBs uh, up top and you will be fine. No, no yeah. issues. Cool. All right, guys. So I think we covered all the talking points about customer service, return policy, upgrade policy. Uh, Jan or Lucas, do you guys have any other points you want to bring up before we close out the stream? Sure. I can mention one thing. We have a open hiring right now on the uh, customer support uh, specialist. And um, 
So um, if anyone are interested in working with us and they feel this is the place uh, with the uh, same mentality and uh, they want to achieve something and uh, have a high uh, expectation growth uh, environment, then uh, this is the place. So uh, go into rndalsound.com and that uh, slash career and then you can uh, give all your information, everything in the, in application form. Cool. So, so do um, you have to, is it something you could work at from home or does you have to, you have to relocate to Norway? Yes. We <laughs> are building uh, our 90% of our team is remote. So you can sit anywhere. You can sit uh, on, on the beach if that would be your thing. So, um, so uh, the the only thing is um, you can we are super flexible on on many things. Um, our culture is freedom and under responsibility, and um, but um, this is a this is a place with the high expectations. We are an A team, and uh, with an A team you have an high expectations. Right, the company not only for me, but inside the company, the high expectation. Uh, you have growth opportunities. Um, so there's a lot of, I think, benefits uh, working from a smaller but mighty company than just mm -hmm. a corporate big top-down, you know, um, command and structure. So I think uh, go to the website and then you can see um, a lot of um, beneficial aspects of the, uh, of the hiring. You heard that, guys. So if you are a passionate audiophile and you want to work for a loudspeaker company, a really kick-ass loudspeaker company, they're hiring. So go check it out, you know, maybe drop your resume there, answer the questions that they have. Do you have like, is it just a place where you could submit a resume or do you have like a questionnaire that they fill out about it? Like, uh, we have a tedious process and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we run uh, Lucas through that uh, for uh, two or three years ago and uh, he still remembers it. It's a tedious process. Even when you do the application, we require the uh, regular information. You take a selfie video so we can get to know you at the first hand. Then we go into a screening interview, and then we have a main interview, we have a fit interview, we have a final interview, and then we go through the references, and then, then we make the decision. So mm. when you start working here, you get to know us, and we get to know you through the process. So it's not like a easy, um, easy hiring and then, you know, easy come, easy go, right? So it's just, we want to be sure that you have the growth mentality as the rest of the team. Right. Um, we are looking for engines and not anchors, so to speak. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> awesome, guys. Appreciate the knowledge here about the, your products and your services. Um, guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me. If you want to suggest video topics or get questions answered, I'm going to put up the winner one more time here for the 1961 giveaway. And congratulations to Tim Dukeman. Awesome. I hope you enjoy those speakers. And if you are listening to this broadcast, please drop a note in the comments about uh, your thoughts on the speakers after you get them set up and the whole process. We appreciate that. And guys, uh, again, you have a great weekend going forward and looking forward to having you on the live stream next month. Maybe we'll talk more about the active products or we'll get you committed to talking about new products coming down the pipe because we always want to know what's new, right? All right. Thank you, Eugene, and uh, have a nice day. Thanks. Thanks for having us. All right. Until next time, my friends, keep listening.